Shut up and sit down. All right, everybody, I am really excited to bring you this episode today. Um, when we think of mobile hunting and we think of mobile tree stand hunting, we generally will look to the story of Lone Wolf and the Dequistos, and, and, and that's kind of a well-known story. Well, what about saddle hunting? You know, to a lot of people, it may seem like a new thing, but it's actually been around since the 60s. So um, saddle hunting was invented in 1961 by the Green family. They're the ones that brought you the trophy line tree saddle and the company that went along with it. And so today we get to talk to one of the original owners, daughter of the inventor of the tree saddle, Sherry Green Mullins, as well as Sean Ferguson, who's one of the owners of the newly branded trophy line. So really exciting to hear the history of the tree saddle from back, you know, before there were even tree stands, really, um, up until today. And the trophy line, they're the ones who've graciously donated a full saddle setup for us to give away for our Patreon giveaway. And so for those of you that don't know what our Patreon is or anything like that, um, you know, that helps to fund the production of the podcast, the hosting, you know, it allows us to get gear to try out things to talk about, um, get out to the shows and meet some of you people and, so, and meet some of the, um, you know, uh, the guests that we have on the shows and, and everything like that. And so to give back to those people that support us, we do quarterly giveaways and we give away some pretty cool stuff. And so this time we're giving away uh, for the fourth quarter a full on saddle setup. So everything you need to saddle hunt, a saddle, sticks, platform. And so it's going to be a Ambush Pro saddle setup from Trophy Line uh, directly from them, as well as a set of Muddy Pro sticks and the Artisan Outdoor Fabrications platform, just like the one that I use. And if you don't, you're not familiar with that, um, you can check that out on the Outdoor Artisan Outdoor Fabrications uh, Facebook, or you can just go onto our YouTube. And I did like a unboxing, and I, I set it up on on the sticks that I was using, which were the Muddy Pros at the time. So everything that you need to know to to set that up is on there. Um, so you can check that out if you want to go to patreon.com forward slash Bowhunter Chronicles podcast. You can check that out there. Uh, basically what it is is you're helping us out, but then you're kind of just getting yourself a raffle ticket to to win some some pretty cool prizes throughout the year. So we do everything that we can to give back because that's, you know, the people that support us are the ones that are helping to further the show and make everything. And so rather than just say, you know, we appreciate it and, and you know, we're trying to do everything we can to make it worthwhile for those people that are that are truly supporting us and helping the show, and we appreciate every single one. If that's not for you, that's no problem, but we would ask this. If you would please just tell somebody about the show, uh, you know, word of mouth, you know, an episode that you liked, some information that you gathered, you know, just tell somebody about it. And if you get a chance to rate us on however you're listening, so... Um, you know, give us a five-star review or take the time and actually write it out and, and, you know, tell us what we can do good, bad, or indifferent. We, all the feedback is positive, you know, it'll allow us to know what we can do better for next time. And, uh, you know, we're available, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, we're on all the platforms. So reach out to us if you have questions, if you want us to talk about something on the show, um, but as always, we appreciate everybody that listens, that takes the time, you know, everybody that reaches out. So thank you so much for listening and enjoy the episode. Thanks. All right, everybody, Adam and John back with another episode of the Bowhunter Chronicles podcast. And we're going to be talking saddle hunting today. Uh, I think everybody, you know, with uh, listening to the previous podcasts and uh, kind of john and i's journey with um you know what we're doing this year hunting and some of the the guests that we've had on previously you know everybody kind of knows what saddle hunting is and kind of the players in the game you know to this point uh so it's not going to be uh what is a bridge what is a, a tether um any of that stuff what is this camouflage diaper that you're wearing in the tree um <laughs> it's it's going to be more of um, maybe we're going to get a little history lesson today. So uh, today on the line we have uh, Sherry Green Mullins and Sean Ferguson with Trophy Line. So how are you guys doing today? Fabulous. Good, Good to get to speak with you guys. Awesome. Awesome. So um, 
I guess I don't even know where to start other than um, maybe a little bit of an introduction of, of, of who each one of you are and how you're uh, involved with Trophy Line um, to this point. Sure, yeah. Sherry, you go ahead. You start. Sure thing. I'm, I'm, uh, my name is Sherry, and my dad is the original inventor of the tree saddle, uh, which uh, ironically he began developing the year I was born in 1961. That's when he started strapping himself into a tree. Um, but I tried to carry on his legacy, which is where I started Trophy Line, and then, uh, Sean, you can give your intro. <laughs> yeah, we've been, um, myself and uh, a group of us have been friends with the family for you know, over 15 years now, and uh, involved back when Trophy Line existed, and uh, that's when we started getting familiar with it, and, um, you know, we, uh, we just stayed in touch all these years from, you know, when Trophy Line was around, and and then when it didn't exist, I think we were always talking Trophy Line and using Trophy Line. So, uh, uh, you know, kind of morphed into something more and more on the lines of uh, uh, how do we bring this back? And this conversation's probably happened four or five years ago. And, right. uh, you know, really before even the, the hype around saddle hunting happened. And, um, and just all, just just normal course of life you know everyone's busy doing something and uh it really didn't come to fruition until about a year and a half ago um when uh a group of us and cherry we just kind of all shook hands and jumped in and said let's 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 make a go at it you know we just felt that it was important <laughs> for the originator the inventor to be back in the game um, with with the growth of saddle hunting, you know, when <clears throat> I'm sure you can get into this a little bit on the on the history side of it, but you know, it's it was you know well before its time when when the trophy line was originally around, and uh, right. you know to the point where you know uh, you know they, they did really well at consumer shows, right? Sherry and uh, yeah, you're able to, <clears throat> able to show people what the product was and and how you used it. It and, was an absolute uh, show and tell necessity. I think we're seeing that that today. So, um, Sherry, why don't you go ahead and, and give us kind of a, a saddle hunting history lesson? You know, so t in talking with, with with Sean before, you know, tethered is is kind of like the DIY guys and the the mm -hmm. arrow hunter is the arborist side of things uh, but back in 1961 without any social media or you know this uh, information moving so fast podcasts and things like that um where did the idea come from and then you know how did okay. it get get rolling i guess it's pretty interesting my dad's pretty creative uh, um but he was an avid hunter and he figured out that he could he could be more successful if he, if he could hunt from an elevated position in a tree than sitting on the ground. And so he began to climb up back in 1961. I don't think there were any tree stands even you know available at that time. So he climbed up the tree. He used uh, tree climbing gas, which arborists use. Full uh, climbers of utility workers use this climbing gas. That's what he used to get up in the tree. And he would sit up on a limb, but he has a problem with falling asleep um, when he sits for too long. So he got scared he would fall out. So he went to the Army Navy Surplus store and bought some webbing and started strapping himself in. And over time, that this, this started in 1961, and, the, and it just evolved. It wasn't a saddle yet, but it was the inception of the saddle. And he began adding to it to make himself more comfortable, and then he began, he added the the interlocking loops, which allowed the uh, maneuverability, it became like a three-hinge point system to get into any position you had to get into to take a shot, um, archery included. And um, the tree saddle was born, adding that seat into it. Now, originally, when he added the uh, pouches on the back and every saddle that he sold after he, he patented it in 1989 and began selling at public shows. And uh, he would sell probably maybe 50 saddles in a year's time. It was kind of like more of a hobby. He, he built them in a shop um, at his house 
and the uh, the unit that secured you to the tree, what he called the safety belt, the tether. He burned holes in, in it for adjustability. So um, the original tree saddle that came to market in 1989 was a unit that um, probably weighed around six and a half pounds with all the leather pouches on it. And um, in the year 2000, he I was changing, having to make a career change because I was um, uh, the industry that I that I was in was a lot of my friends were moving to the Dominican Republic, so that was just not my cup of tea. So I was going to be making a career change, and he just said, "If you'll do something with a tree saddle, I'll give you the company." So in 2000, um, I looked at it and I decided to do my due diligence, and I did some investigating and research on the hunting industry uh, to find out. How large the industry was and what kind of dollar volume uh, was generated in the hunting industry I was quite frankly very surprised shocked to see how much money people were spending in the hunting industry but nice to find out how much was going to conservation how what a big part hunters are um, are taking in cons in the conservation effort and um, safety was a big deal I, I learned in my research so um, the tree saddle affords a very uh, safe means of hunting. A uh, hunter can hunt as low or as high as they want to in the tree and still have all the mobility and ability to hide behind the tree. So get big guys that weigh 350 pounds, they can hide on a tree saddle. Little kids, every it's more, it became like a family thing. Fathers hand it down to their kids. And like I was telling you earlier, we have kids who killed their first, uh, their first year out of the tree saddle when they were six or seven years old. They're in the military now. And still coming to see my family, you know. <clears throat> so, um, in that beginning time when we introduced the tree saddle to the market, I can't tell you we did. We went to a ton of consumer shows in that due diligence process period of time, and I have to tell you that I got sick and tired of seeing people shaking their heads no, walking away. You know, they just uh, we took a tree to our to our shows and. Somebody would be in that tree, climb the tree, doing demos in the saddle the entire time at these consumer shows, and you know how long they go and how long they last. And um, it was tiring, but it's an absolute show and tell, or absolute show and tell. We decided that we were going to have to, um, when I saw that there was a lot of potential for it, we knew we were going to have to do a video, an instructional video, because there was no way that we could show and tell every person that bought the tree saddle how to use it you know, effectively and, and get the kind of volume that we would need to justify a company, you know. Um, so we produced a, a, an instructional video, and we went to, started going to these uh, to business shows, like a distributor show, and, and saw right away that a lot of the tree sand manufacturing companies perceived us to be a competitor, and I went from one vendor to the next, introducing us, and assuring them that we were not a competitor of a tree stand um, because that would be like fighting City Hall, introducing some, something like a tree saddle uh, into a market where there were just so many different tree stands on the market and everyone just like uh, guys have their favorite Ford or Chevy. It would be like telling a Ford guy to throw his Ford out and just drive a Chevy. It's just not going to happen. So you have to find a way. To position your product so that people actually hear what you have to say and understand what the benefits were of the product. Um, so it was a, a very long and growing process to finally start trying to make headway um, in the hunting industry. We uh, met a lot of people uh, who became very, very good friends in the hunting industry and tried to help us along the way. A lot of retailers helped us. Um, but um, I guess the the hardest thing is taking that wall down and getting people to look at this very common sense approach to hunting. Rather than sitting out on the front of a tree like a sitting duck when deer would come through, you could actually maneuver yourself to hide behind the tree and take advantage of that cover and take aim, take your take your shot when the optimum moment presented itself. So. Um, I think we, we finally hit that, I guess we finally hit uh, a point in the market where people were actually starting to listen to us in 2003, which was the first year we got into Cabela's. Um, so 
but still a show and tell product. That's that was the problem on a retail level was putting it, trying to find a way to uh, put these things uh, on shelves and stores, store shelves, and have people come through and have impulse shopping. You know where they would know what it was about. Um, very difficult product to sell from a retail uh, standpoint because we just didn't have the the ground spell yet. Um, the market just wasn't ready for the tree saddle. One of the things that we noticed was um, that six pound, six and a half pound product that we started with, with the, the tree saddle was leather, number one, it was leather. And number two, had all these pouches on it. So it was like a predetermined configuration. So there was no true customization of the product. So we added a climbing belt onto it and the little mod loops around the, the, the individual loops around the waist, which allowed you to add pouches. We stripped all the pouches off and decided to try to come into the market with a good, better, best model. We created the ultralight model, mesh unit, a camouflage model, and we had the, in honor of the legacy of the tree saddle, had the leather, had the leather unit still available. So now we've, we've presented it as a good, better, best. You pick your entry-level product, and then you can add whatever pouches on it you want to. You customize your own saddle. A kid can go get a $19.99 or $14.99 pouch for his dad for Father's Day, and you can build it up, trick it out, change it as you go through the season. Uh, it becomes your own personal hunting tool. Pack it out so you know when you grab your saddle, you've got everything you need, your release, your scent, your gloves, your, you know, face mask, whatever you, you need to have packed out. You grab your saddle and go, and you know you didn't leave anything behind at camp, you know, when you get to the tree you want to climb. So it was, um, in a nutshell, about 15 years in a nutshell of what we went through. But um, we just, you know, even with what we, what we arrived at with, the market with with this customizable good better best versions entry level pricing uh the market just still wasn't really ready uh mass market i would say uh for the tree saddle and so here we are and i think that we're finally at a place where the tree saddle can actually take off you know when you have people like tethered and air hunter are uh, coming behind and you know that something when people start to uh, make competitive products, you know, it's um, a good sign that the market is ready for it, isn't it? So, um, thank goodness for people, our, our good friends like Sean and, and the other buddies that came along and wanted to actually help us bring Trophy Line back. We're the innovators. I believe that once you're in the lead, you keep innovating, you stay in the lead. And that's what we would like to do. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the things that you said there are, you know, it's something that you hear a lot. It's like, oh, you were ahead of your time, or like there was a there was so much forward thinking of, you know, of all of the things with the modular loops and being able to add and subtract things. Those are things today that we take for granted. But you know, twenty thirty years ago, it was <laughs> right. you got what you got. You know, it wasn't right. that wasn't the case. And you know, so you know we've you know our listeners know kind of like the history of this. But you know, my father in law Frank and, and John Stad there. Um, you know, they were in the industry going through all of that time. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's just one of those things where you didn't really see it. It was something, you know, I, I remember right. Right. like the back of the Outdoor Life magazines. And I've said this before, and I don't know if it was Trophy yeah. Line or if it was the Tree Sling it or what it was. It was, it was trophy trophy line. Line. It was trophy line. And I remember those guys were really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I remember seeing that, and it was the 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 black silhouette, and the guy leaned way over, and I was yep. just like, man, that is such a weird thing. But that was all there was. There was just that one little square in the back, and mm -hmm. there was you know, in knowing what we know now, where you say that it's a show and tell product, but that show and tell is even one further. I mean, because so right. myself, you know, this year, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I deal in absolutes, I guess. And so last year I sold my climber so that I would hunt <laughs> just out of stand and sticks. And this year I set out and said, okay, I'm only going to hunt from the saddle this year. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. And the first 
10 times, five times I sat in it and was like, this is not comfortable. This is weird, you know, and, you know, just coming back from, you know, eight or nine days in Missouri and all day sits and, you know, and hunting in from it, you know, up until that point, it's like you really get dialed in and now it's just like, it's just so comfortable. Um, yeah. But you can't even do that. Time. You can't even do that in a show and tell setting. I mean, I've got a friend who won right. uh, won a saddle last year uh, around Christmas time, and I don't know that he ever hunted it. And he sat in it a few times, and the bridge got in his way, and he said, "You know, this isn't, you know, it's not for me." Without giving it a fair shake. But the hard part is, is right. that you have to. At this point it's it's changing a little bit so now there there are some resources mm -hmm. out there and there are people that have saddles and it's not all of that um sure absurd. you can get a lot of intel from other other users right or you can well, the, online, it's, the it's DIY still, guys are doing yeah. us a big favor by posting posting everything that they do online because it is actually showing a lot of that learning curve to try to shorten that i really believe it shortens the learning curve and it pulls the guys in that don't want to give it a fair shake. You know, I would, I would never ever tell someone throw out your tree stand and just use a tree saddle. I would never do that because you never know who you are, are turning off to the product altogether by doing something like that. Um, if people could just understand that every hunter needs at least one tree saddle, so that when you have an opportunity that presents itself in the woods that you can't go into with a climber or uh, you, the sign moves, the hot spots move in the course of the season, as we know happens. You can, uh, and I'll give you an example. We had a, we had a customer from, um, from, from Illinois. His name was Chris Graham. He called up and he bought his first tree saddle and he was going on a hunt um, in Illinois. Packed his, packed his bags, and on Saturday night of his weekend hunt, I get an email message from him showing me his first Pope and Young deer he'd ever killed in his life. He said he had put his stand up and hunted there Friday night, and the, he, could, he could tell that the activity was just out of his bow range. So the next day, he just moved in a little closer and slipped up in a tree in the tree saddle, and he comes home with his first Pope and Young animal. So the next year, he got two poking youngs, and he's gotten poking young deer on a regular basis since he started hunting out of the tree saddle. But if you um, if you present it as the only use a tree saddle, I think it turns people off. But if they see that it's a tool that it's so compact, it's not like it's not like carrying a big tree stand that's clanking around in your truck. It will literally fit behind the seat of your your truck, so you can have it with you wherever you are where you might need it grab it and go when you need to use it. You can just use it as a pre-season tool that's so much more comfortable than other things are that you may use to put your fixed position tree stands up because of where the, the belt, the climbing belt comes up from the corners of the saddle. It's distributing your weight along your seat so you don't have a belt cutting into your waist while you're hanging your, your stands. You know, it's just a, a very common sense tool that fits in where nothing else will and therefore a product that Every hunter just needs one tree saddle. I wish that we could just really sell that uh, that pitch because it's it's very true. Regardless of how you use it, every hunter needs at least one, whether it's to hang the stands or just slip into the season in the middle of the season. Or look at it this way: um, you know what it costs to fix trees for your fixed position stands? You have to have the way up. You have to hang. You have to buy a stand for every tree you want to prepare that you want to hunt. But with one tree saddle, you can hunt the rest of the woods. You're not limited to what you fix in the preseason. So it really does. As a, a good friend of ours said, the first year we did our, our, that instructional video that I talked to you about, he said it opens up a whole new world of hunting for me. And, you know, we were blown away when he said that because it just came, we didn't give anybody scripts when we did this. We just wanted their testimonials, just raw testimonials and that came out of uh, this fellow's mouth and we're like man we couldn't have scripted that even any better than that <laughs> because it, it literally does open up the world of hunting to hunters and from a safety standpoint i mean you won't find a safer way to hunt in the woods adam and john there's we you know when when sherry and i uh got together a couple of times the the story that she had told there are hundreds and hundreds of those, you know, where we kind of take for granted right now with social media, right? 
and and somebody makes a post and tells about it right away. Everything <laughs> since then, you know, all these guys and women and kids took the time to either write a letter or send an email to Trophy Line and Sherry and her family about it. So there, there's literally hundreds of them. It's it's pretty cool to read through and 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 and, and see how that that crown show was there. It just didn't get over the hump, you know, to where it started to catch on um, to like it is today. But you know, obviously with social media now and, and you know, guys like the hunting public and everyone wanting to be mobile and, you know, things like that, it's, it's, it's starting to grow, right? We're still, we're still far away. I mean, we, we, you know, still a lot of white space out there to grow, you know, when you look at. Yeah, yeah, the numbers that are actually using the saddle and uh, the amount of hunters that are out there, uh, especially bow hunters, um, you know, we're, we're just scratching the surface, you know, yeah. um, when it comes to this. I promise you, you know, I, I know you got a doe this weekend, uh, your first saddle kill, but just based on the history of people that we have personally met um and introduced to this to, to the tree saddle and and those guys that went out that I'm talking about not just a weekend hunter that goes out sits up in the stand drinking a coke and throws his can down these are avid hardcore hunters these are the people that um, that we were working with in the, in, a, in the regional area when we first started um, these guys would get out and, and use their tree saddles and my dad would tell them, "You're gonna see, you're gonna, you're gonna get bigger and fill your tag, bigger animals, and you're gonna fill your tags every year." And that's what would happen. You're, it's just a more common sense approach to allow you to blend into the woods. You're actually evening the playing field um, because you're slipping in there, not making any unnatural noises. You're blending in, and you're not. You know, there were a lot of uh, articles that were written back when we were. I guess about three, four years into this, uh, where they were talking about tree stand wary deer. Have you seen any of those articles in the past where they, deer became wise to that that metal stand sticking out on the side of the tree that wasn't a very natural thing? And um, we saw a lot of articles like that back when we were starting it anyway. And the tree saddle just lets you take on more of a natural profile to the tree that adds to your ability to blend in. So, yeah, you look uh, like a big Y in the tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. I I have to admit, like, when Adam got his saddle last year, I was like, what, you know, what are you doing with that thing? I mean, honestly, and mm-hmm. sure. you know, I've always been, I used to have my lock on tree stands, but then I just, you know, pretty much went to uh, just a climber because I wanted to be mobile. But, you know, you're talking 22 pounds. It's big and bulky. It's always, you know, clanking around. And then this year, or well, last year we went back to, like Adam was saying, we went back to just the standing sticks, you know, hang and hunt. And I didn't sell my climber, but <laughs> it's still sitting on the shelf. I'm looking at it right now. But <laughs> this year I have a bad back, and I was – actually we were supposed to go out to South Dakota uh, back in August, and my back was out so bad we had to cancel the trip and come hunting season, whitetail season here in – michigan i i went on a couple hunts and i trimmed some of the stuff off but my pack still weighed 52 pounds with my stand sticks camera Mm. gear and i went on a you know it was a short hike i mean it was three quarters of a mile but it took me an hour and a half through the swamp and Mm. by that time i told them i almost left the tree stand out there honest to god i was like (laughs) forget this i'm done (laughs) and i ended up borrowing adam's saddle and I'm like, oh my God, I love this thing. And so, so you're wearing it in instead of carrying it in. Yep, wearing it. I wore it in. You know, I, I hunted out of his that that first time, and I was like, man, I don't think I'll ever hunt out of a tree stand again. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, then the next day, Adam and I went on a hunt together, and he was filming. So he was back in his saddle, and I was in my tree stand, and I felt I was, you know, I'm. I had my safety harness on. I was tethered to the tree, but I still, I, I felt like unsecure after being in the saddle after mm-hmm. just one time. And I told him like, man, you're, you're always secure. You know, you, you don't have to worry. You're, you're at the end of that tether, so you don't have that uneasy feeling of wonder when the spot is going to go 
go out, right, to know that it's got you in the tree. Yeah. Whereas, like, in the saddle, you're sitting at the end of that. And I'll, I'll tell you something that will that will um, add to your comfort in the tree saddle, especially if you've got an injured back. You know, it's uh, and we have a we do have a friend that has a uh, had a couple of friends that have had back injuries, but they're able to hunt because the the saddle the the saddle actually does the turning for your back, so your back doesn't have to do the twisting and turning. So it takes that pressure off of you. But if you had a pair of our knee pads. I'm telling you, it makes you like you're totally weightless in the tree. Yeah, I, I ended up taking, I don't, I didn't have, I looked at some of my carpenter knee pads. I'm like, yeah, those are kind of funky. But I ended up taking the seat off of one of my tree stands and I just mm-hmm. made a tree pad out of it, which ended up working the tree. for good right now. I mean, it <laughs> yeah. worked out good, but I'll definitely yep. be getting a, a, a pair of uh, knee pads. And, and so, John, real quick, um, you know, for us i feel like because of the podcast and everything we live in this space where you know tree saddles are the are normal and uh, you know it's just another tool all this stuff but you hunt it's like with jason and his family and and other people like what does he think like when he because he's he's like um like very blunt and oh yeah he's (laughs) My buddy Jason, he is a hardcore hunter. Like matter of fact, he's been up at his cabin. That's who I went hunting with last weekend. That's where I killed my doe on the way up there out of the saddle. Uh, but he's, I think he's going on three weeks up there right now. And but he's got yeah. all he hunts all public land. But you know he's he's got this rickety uh, ladder stand that he, you know, it's brand new, but it's I don't know how you could even kill anything. I, I sat in it one night just go up because my son was going to sit in it and he couldn't even move in it without it creaking and popping and yeah <laughs> and then he's got a bunch <laughs> of the you know the 39 dollar uh hang on tree stands that he hunts out i'm like dude you need to check the saddle out and but i ended up hunting so much that i didn't even get an opportunity to uh <laughs> to show him but <laughs> but uh he'll definitely i think once because he wants to be mobile i'm like He's like, I'm sick of carrying tree stands. And I'm like, well, dude, you don't even know this thing's on. You put it on and you wear it in. And, I mean, if you walk past the tree, I'm like, or sign, old sign, and you're like, oh, man, I want to get up in that tree over there. And I don't know how many times I've heard him say that. I'm like, I should have been over yeah. 30 yards. I'm like, well, that's that's what this is for, dude. You just walk over right. that tree and get up it. You don't have to worry about, you know, you throw your sticks on or, you know, your whatever climbing, you know, your preferred climbing apparatus is throw mm-hmm. it on, get up there and you're, you're done, you know? So I was, I was going to say, you made me think of a, uh, a hunt that I went up on up in Minnesota, um, several years ago and I'd never been on a bear hunt before and we were really trying to promote our tree saddle. So, um, the, the, um, person who was putting this hunt on was going to videotape my hunts. Unfortunately, he was in a, walk on tree stand so i was hooked up below him so he could videotape my hunt and i'm sitting in the tree i'm all i've got my knee pads on i've got my bait my platform that i've built and my bows hanging on my bow hanger and i'm snuggled up and kind of laying my, my the right side of my head is leaning against the strap and up there they had bait piles out for the bear and uh, so i had my head laying on the strap looking at the bait pile just watching it kind of kind of close my eyes and look and look around and I got so sick and tired of hearing I just want to say would you please every time he would move even reposition himself on the stand his clothes on the on the seat of that of that lock on tree stand I couldn't believe that um how much noise it made (laughs) after you get up in the tree and it's not a natural kind of noise you know that little the whistle that your clothes make, you know, if, they're, if they're not soft fabrics, I and mean, we were just have always been very fanatical about quiet and then that just uh, make sure that everything is natural sounding. Um, but uh, sorry, I, I I had to tell you that. <laughs> I, I, missed a, I missed about a 400 pound black bear on that one, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. Adam, I wanted to touch on one thing that you you had said. Cause you said you, it took you probably, what, eight or ten times to really start yeah. dialing it in or become comfortable with it. You know, just 
you know, you, you, everybody's built different, right? And uh, especially in your core area, you know, where you're where you're wearing the saddle, whether it's ours or uh, or competitors. It, every single, you know, some guys some guys get it instantly, right? It feels comfortable. Um, it hits them right. Um, but a lot of cases, it's just it's something different. And, and, and it's one of those things you, you got to give it time. You, it takes a little time to dial it in. It takes a little time to figure out where, how high your tree tether is, you know, um, you know, how, how, uh, where you want your, your, your prusik, you know, if you want to stand, you want to lean, you want to sit, you want to do all of the above. It just, it, it's at the end of the day though, it's you got to get out and use it. Right, whether it's just in your in your yard, or or actually on a hunt and and and, and maneuvering around and, and testing it out, and then even at that point, you're still always dialing it in to some degree, and then eventually you find that sweet spot, and uh, but you just got to give it justice. To, to, it, and sometimes it's right away, and sometimes it takes a little while. It's probably one of the most personal pieces of hunting equipment that you can own. You know, once you once you figure out that hey, you can you pick what what you need and you trick it out the way you need it tricked out, so everything is at your fingertips where you need it to be, and and like Sean said, getting your positioning proper for your weight and body structure, you know where you're comfortable, how you shoot if it's a bow, if you're shooting with a gun or whatever. It's um, the most personal piece of equipment that you have. It's your safety harness and tree stand in one. So it's your you're trusting your life to this thing basically at the same time, you know, and uh, so you couldn't, um, you shouldn't have more respect for any other piece of hunting equipment that you own than, than your tree saddle. <laughs> and so Sherry, you know, we got through, you know, kind of the, the inception of the saddle, it's brought to market. Um, it's, you're having a hard time getting it in front of people. Um, you go to the shows, you know, you're, we're at 2003, 2004, you've got it into Cabela's and then what happened from there and then how did it, um, kind of morph into where, where we're at today? Well, um, 2003 was the first year we got into a major retail and that was, that was with Cabela's and those guys were incredibly nice. Uh, they really wanted, they, they believed in the product. They knew that it was out of its time. Um, but they, they loved the product. I mean, we would go to their store promotions, and we would have throngs of people around us watching the product, and they would sell out of every every ounce of the product that we took this show. But uh, from that point forward, we went and we got into Bass Pro, and we, I guess we got into, over the next um, uh, three to five years, we got into, let me see, 2003, 4, 5, 6, uh, we were in 7. So over the next five years, we were in, every major retailer in the country and um we just got to that critical mass where we needed to be able to hand it off then and, and you know when you've got a product like that that is a, a big show and tell product you really need that pro staff infrastructure across the country to to do all those store promotions to keep the momentum going and we just uh we didn't get that accomplished and the market really wasn't quite ready for it yet so we kind of kind of went into a little holding pattern and um and then finally you know we these talks that we you know we've been having talks with uh with sean for a couple of years and like like you said about a year and a half ago we finally signed off and decided to get together and make this happen so i'm um, not going to say that we don't have a um um, a lot of work to do to get this where we want to get because I'll tell you one thing my dream is that it's going to be like a Lay's potato chip every hunter needs at least one tree saddle in their arsenal that's what I'd like to see happen that's what I think ought to happen right <laughs> yeah I after using mine I truly believe that I mean and I've been hunting I just turned 45 so I've been hunting for what 32 years now so we have a um, we have a customer who's a preacher, uh, one of our first customers, and we met him. This is a dear he's a dear friend of our family now. I mean, you have to understand back when we started this in 2000, we were having to do you know face. I'm talking about real FaceTime with people. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, we uh, so we met him at a at a at a uh, hunting show, and. 
he had gone and looked at all of the tree stands that were that were being displayed at this time of the show when he weighed 350 pounds so that kind of put him over the tipping point on the on the weight limits with tree stands uh, he said he was very uncomfortable even looking at the lock-on stands or whatever but he became such an avid avid supporter of ours he was in our little instructional video he's the guy you see up in this huge oak tree uh with a firearm we had to special make a tree saddle for him but uh we there was no such thing as tma there was no such thing as you know we we had our own safety standards that we set and we tested all of our service 1500 pounds and we used all mill spec materials to to make the product good because we wanted it to be safe first and foremost and uh, so Gary, you get in this this tree stand, and he said it's the only the only thing he has ever hunted out of that he felt actually safe. The one thing is for sure: the more you weigh, the bigger the spot if you fall out of that tree. So he just, you know, he he really, it, you know, for someone like that to feel comfortable and safe hunting in a product, um, it, it says a lot. But he also um, made the point clear to us that you know he didn't have to necessarily be 20 feet up in a tree he could hunt at the base of a tree and not have to hunt as high because he had the cover of the tree using a tree saddle um and you if you take that just a step further uh, for people that hunt on the ground you can hook up at the base of a tree and not have to worry about leaves and branches you know making noise throughout your hunt as you change positions you don't have things falling asleep anymore if you hunt out at the base of a tree in a tree saddle instead of sitting on the ground. Um, so he, uh, this 350-pound guy, he could hunt up at an elevated position, but he didn't have to go as high uh, to be as to be successful hunting um, when he was using his tree saddle. So that became the only way he did hunt. But um, uh, that's a whole nother. Uh, application for the tree saddle is for uh, taking a ground hunter and making a ground hunter a lot more successful by just looking up at the base of a small tree. You can even stand on the ground if you had to and use your knee pads to take the weight off of your feet if you wanted to. But um, the the versatility of the product is just unbelievable, and I'm glad to, I'm glad to know that you had the opportunity to uh, use a tree saddle hiking in. That's that's a uh, a huge benefit yeah it's definitely a, a major plus on my part i mean shaving off the weight of the stand and stuff i mean definitely a, a whole lot better <laughs> <laughs> and so sean you know you you've been uh in contact and everything with the family for mm -hmm. x amount of time you finally you know, it sounds like after years and years of, you know, back and forth, whether it's life or, you know, whatever gets in the way and you finally get the handshake and you say, all right, we're going to do this thing. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know what, though? It, 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 so it's, it's a great point. So so we, um, you know, so we, we sat down and and talked what, at the end of the day, what do we want? What do we want trophy lion to be? Right? We knew we knew that we wanted trophy lion back in the game now that tree saddle is becoming popular. Right? We thought it was important that the invader, the originator, to uh, be back and people know and know the story. And, you know, I thought it was very important for the Green family to take part in what they started and so that was that was kind of the beginning part of it but we also know though that looking looking at the outdoors in general like where else can we take trophy line you know and and so and and how do we get that going um you know you look at you look at when you look at competition what's in the market and then you also look at other white space that's that's in the market. And you know, when we first decided what to launch with, it it was um you know, we were kind of all over the place a little bit. We we knew obviously we knew we were coming out with a tree saddle. Um you know, we started to go back and look at 
one where you know you look at the ambush you know the kind of uh it was kind of the next phase after the leather model the originator and and over those years um from the time that the uh, trophy line hasn't been around and, and to, to today a lot of those things that uh, that's in the ambush today are things that we did to, uh, to our saddles ourselves or we got feedback from saddlehunter.com right there's a you know there's forums full of people diy guys like ourselves that were making all kinds of changes to their trophy line and you know the you know uh, improvements and some not improvements you know so we took all that information and started compiling it and said well let's stick with the true dna the saddle itself and how do we make it how do we improve it how do we make it better how do we make it lighter um maybe a little more user friendly from a tree hookup right and so that's how that started to evolve from you know using the the rope the climbing rope um with the five inch sewn eye in it um for your tree tether with a prusik knot and uh lineman belt made out of the same rock climbing rope um we use atlantic grades uh ropes on those then you look at the saddle itself and and over the last 10 years you know there's obviously uh, a lot of technology that's come along and so we started looking at lighter fabrics um so we use a little lighter webbing but we still wanted to keep the the beefiness and the rigidness of that because that's what's that's what's so important about it you know when you pick up a trophy line it's you know it's well built you know it, there's there's substance to it um but we also wanted to you know there's a fine line of of also being lightweight so when we, we went through all the different mesh materials we made sure we found the right one that matched with the webbing that we were going along with um like she talked about the original ones are six in ish poundage you know when when if you just take our saddle alone by itself now on a medium large um ambush saddle no pouches or anything you're roughly 2.1 pounds and then you throw in the two pouches that uh, that come along with it and the tree tether and the lineman rope and the crew six and the carabiners you're roughly about 4.1 4.2 pounds so a lot lighter than what was in the past um not as light as the others in the market today but that's okay it's they're just ours is just a different style ours is more of a hammock style a little more to that um but we thought like yeah we thought it was very important to bring back the dna of trophy line you know and and, and get that established but when we we also felt like it was important to rebrand it from uh from a new logo standpoint um maybe something that's you know uh more in with the times the 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 logo with a silhouette and especially with the silhouette on both sides is iconic right and sherry and i talk about it to, to the day you know we're, we're still trying to figure out we're going to utilize that probably on a website and things like that so that won't that won't ever go away but i think where we want to take trophy line um and involve trophy line it was it, a new logo was involved and we dropped tree saddles from from the brand name and uh, so we're known just the trophy line now and you know at the end of the day we want to we want to continue to add categories onto trophy line never getting away from tree saddles the tree saddles is, is our dna and we're always going to evolve in tree saddles and look at the next evolution of tree saddles you know see where we can take tree saddles and but there's a lot of things that the outdoorsman uses um and we're going to look at all this you know we're, we're we're we have been since uh we met a year and a half ago and where we want to evolve it and so you'll you'll see a lot more out of trophy line down the road um we have we have a couple new things coming out next year um that will uh will help 
um, tree saddle hunters, and uh, a couple items that are just great for the outdoorsmen. Um, May I so. say this to add to what Sean is saying? Trophy line is the true innovator. And one thing that we believe in is when, when you're an innovator, you can't help yourself but to continue to innovate. You you strive to keep bringing to market by products that fill voids and needs that the hunters, sportsmen, the sportsmen have uh, in their craft. And Trophy Line is the true innovator, will continue to be the true innovator, and it only um, strengthens that statement to know that we have people that are actually coming behind and trying to not, you know, to become competitors. You know, it's uh, it's very flattering, you know, to to have started something that other people are trying to mimic, and uh, uh, and that's a healthy thing. Competition is a very healthy thing, but um, Trophy Line will has always been and will always be the innovators. And I think you'll be proud to see the products that come to market. This is, I mean, this is something we talked about, you know, uh, as as we were rebranding and looking at. You know, I I give lots of credit to our competitors and what they have done because right. they have they have created uh, the buzz that that is happening now. You know, they you know they saw they saw the white space available and and went after it so i have nothing but great things to say about those guys and um, they make great products um you know it's uh it 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 was reassuring you know when um from a trophy line standpoint that people believed in saddle hunting and got the word out there and went after it so that was just that was actually reassuring to us to say you know what? Okay, now is the time. You know, because like I said, yeah, I mean, we we've been talking about it for four years. You know, and we saw this coming, and um, and you know, if I had anything to redo, I would I would have said, you know, we should have jumped in four years ago. You know, and yeah. moved a little faster on it. But everything happens for a reason. And um, but again, I I I love competition. I think it at the end of the day, it it, it drives innovation. It will make it all better, and at the end of the day, the uh, the hunter, the outdoorsman, is going to make out because I think you'll start seeing some incredible products coming out in the near future from all of us because of it. Yeah, and I I'm really looking forward to that as well because, like I say, it, all, although it's not a new idea, um, you know, everybody, you know, it for 99 percent of the people it is new or it's new to actually be able to see one and be able to, you know, sit in one, get the feel of it. You know, John, John's been hunting out of the, the trophy line and I have one of the, the tethered saddles and it just is a availability thing. Right. So with, with John's saddle, and this is, this is not a joke. This is not anything about trophy line or uh, anything like that. the, I've n- not sat in it in a tree at a tree height. I've had it. I've worn it. Uh, I've stepped into it and cinched it down and said, okay. Uh, when you were talking about the build of it, it is definitely substantial. I mean, it's um, as far yep. as the the build of it, I mean, it, it has a completely different feel than, you know, what I'm used to. But the, my experience in a saddle is only the one that I've ever had my hands on. So, but you know, so John, that saddle shows up, he does the unboxing, he goes and hunts with it. He, we're, we have a podcast that night. He brings it over so that we can look at it. I stand in it. He takes it immediately back and has been hunting in it ever since. <laughs> there hasn't been a time where, you know, it's been like, Hey, you know, you can sit in this one versus, versus <laughs> that one. But that's one thing that I noticed was, um, the rigidity of it. And, I think yeah. one of the things that is Quality. one of the things that is um, like it, it maybe beat too hard um, on a lot of different levels, and the the saddle hunting community um, kind of is like the pure extremists on this to some degree, and that gets lost in that um, 
like the conversation because you're t- uh, for the most people for the most part people in these conversations haven't been saddle hunting long enough to know whether it makes a difference or not or come from a background but the weight you know you said the weight of you know six pounds to four pounds to you know and the competitors are lighter like i've not taken my saddle and weighed it and all the ropes and the gear because it weighs just about as much as my safety harness does but the key is the bulk and the the ease of use and it doesn't matter a pound here you know everybody's counting ounces and grams and silly yeah. stuff the bulk <laughs> is is the real i mean <laughs> i mean oh yeah i mean when you're walking through the woods and you got a saddle on instead of a you know i I'm a big guy. I'm 6'3", 230 pounds, and, you know, so I use one of the bigger uh, lock-ons. And, I mean, no matter what I do, I'm going through, and if you're trying to sneak through some, some heavy brush, you're you're hitting that thing on it, and it's, you know, right. making, you know, yeah. planking, and it, you have a saddle on. The only thing you got to worry about, it, I mean, you don't have to worry about anything. It's it's there with my pack. And, so. And, yeah. and one of the reasons that I say that is that, you know, you mentioned the the weight, and for guys that are listening, and, and for people that are thinking about um, saddle hunting, and then there is competitors now. So there's multiple options of a saddle that you can buy, or you can build one yourself, or you can have somebody build you one. You know, there is now a market for it, and I just don't sure. want people to say, "Well, that one's lighter, so it's got to be better." Like it's a whole nother thing. Like where a tree stand may have the same dimensions. So you're looking at something that, you know, is going to have, you know, roughly the same amount of comfort, the same amount of floor space, the same amount of, you know, bulk. Yeah. Then pounds matter. Pounds matter. If it's 25 pounds or there's an aluminum version, that's 15 or 13. Yeah. That that's pretty substantial. But at this point you've already cut 10 pounds off of you know probably one of the lighter stands on the market but it doesn't even you know you you don't have a a safety harness any longer and so the amount of things that you're carrying into the woods is completely different so i just don't want that to be lost in the conversation that you know if somebody is looking at this saddle versus this saddle versus this saddle well this one's lighter there there it's a completely different feel a completely different everything and the yeah having multiple um, versions kind of lends to a what style of hunter are you are you the $30 Walmart lock-on guy are you the $500 lone wolf custom gear you know version you know or you know where do you fall in that you know some of this stuff is just having an argument for argument's sake to some degree yeah absolutely but I mean you also look at it too you know you look at the different styles and 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 um, a lot of theirs are um, like a minimalist style built more on a rock climbing harness type, and ours is more of a hammock style where it wraps around you. So there are different fits too, right? And mm-hmm. and, and 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 more to them. And, and but that's the beauty of it, right? There's it's uh, especially especially uh, saddle hunters. We're all kind of tinkerers, and we love gizmos and gadgets, and and love the DIY stuff. So. And that's kind of the beauty of, of, of what's on the market now, because everybody's everybody's buying someone's and then tinkering, right, and making it themselves and, and modding it up, and 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 that's endless, you know. So, so you make a good uh, point about the hand, about the hammock style fit. That's one of the things that was very important about the the trophy line, true saddle. The uh, it, we always said it cradles your seat like a hammock and that feeds into the comfort level of the product and as a hunter you know the more comfortable you are from the tree the longer you can stay the longer you can stay you're you're increasing your odds right so the comfort was very very important and that's why it was designed to to fit more like a a hammock style as i said let me touch real quick on on you know the how how we brought back the the um ambush also you know when you know, we we went through and we added a couple features that the original ambush didn't you know like the waist belt um you know where the the the, the, the original ambush which most guys didn't know um because I, I got friends that have been using the old one for years and didn't realize 
you could grab it. You know, we have a double bridge, and, um, and and talking about the original one and the new one, but you could grab the top strap on the bridge and pull it to your right, and it'll actually cinch down around your waist. A lot of guys didn't realize you could do that with the old the old model. Um, we actually still have that option, but we went through and added the the waist belt and um, did a couple things. One, it made it easier to you know pull up and cinch down and and on your way to your to your uh, location you want to hunt. Um, the other side was from a safety standpoint, right? And um, you know we do all our testing through a third party testing facility um, that that um, is uh, one of the testing facilities for TMA in the market. And we we went through every single test you possibly can name, um, from you know pulling the webbing apart to you know the the brake strength of the of the webbing to the thread to the the material itself to the the carabiners and the rope climbing rope and everything past the flying colors, and and so we added those those type of features. But one of the biggest things that we wanted to make sure not just coming back in and reestablishing trophy line as a brand in this in this category as originators, but we also wanted to be very price conscious about it. When you start looking at prices creeping up and you know, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars, you know, the, when you start building your package, you know, we 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 really took that into consideration um, because, you know, there's there are a lot of do people that are getting into it or there's a lot of people that want to get in it and you start looking at some of the expenses and realize you know guy might have his climber and realize that you know when you start trying to compare apples to apples and the expenses it's like man that costs way more than my climber does to get into it and maybe i don't want to make that change yet so when when we when we started building out the the ambush you know, the waste buck was a great example because a lot of people ask me this question all the time. Like, how did you end up on that buckle? And uh, the the buck the buckle is a it's a basic buckle. It it um it does the job though. It cinches down. It it is it you know uh uh it it passes all the safety ratings. And um, but we knew that when we launched, we wanted to be sub three hundred dollars on a kit. And, and and we did that. We got we we're at two seventy nine ninety nine, and that's your your saddle, your two pouches, your tree tether, your crucic with that, your lineman's rope with your crucic, and three black diamond carabiners and a cinch bag to put it all. And maintaining two seventy nine retail, we just felt that was a good retail to be. The under three hundred dollars, could we have easily put a more deluxe uh, buckle on that? Absolutely. You know, and, and, and I looked at a lot of them, trust me. And, but when you start doing that, but especially some of the deluxe model, the deluxe, uh, uh, buckles that are on the market, you know, you're talking at $20 at retail, some of those buckles. And it just didn't make sense for us to add that product to it. And then all of a sudden you're at the $300 threshold. You know, we, we, we use a buckle that is safe. It feels good, it works, and it does the job, and it keeps us under the price point that a lot of people can get into and try um, uh, tree saddle for the first time. And <clears throat> But that's kind of the beauty of it. So we, we have a nice establishment on our Ambush Light and the Mesh and the Pro, which is in, we just launched last weekend in the camo, and there'll be evolutions just like anything else. And uh, we can all we can always go up and 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 bring more technology and improvements. And uh, what we thought was really important to get back in the game was to hit a certain price point, um, so guys can and and girls can can get into this for the first time. <clears throat> oh, for sure. I mean, hell, John wouldn't be in a saddle right now if it wasn't for a availability because that's been, you know, the the market is sure. You know the the consumers. Oh, a great point. There's a lot of consumers and and not a lot of uh you know availability uh to a point. But the price point, you know, if it was you know 500 bucks, then it would have been 
Yeah. You know, out of the question, right? But you you brought up a great point, though, the availability. You know, we, so, um, so we didn't launch until October 8th. So, and and we were promoting on social media for a long time. One one was our stuff was going through testing, um, which takes a while, longer than anybody thinks it does. <laughs> Whatever they tell you, it is double it. <laughs> and then, but the other side, but the other side of it is, you know, you start looking at, and this does, this does it isn't in our in our industry. You know, this is it's across any industry whatsoever. What you know, um, it, and and pre-orders those things. We just felt like. We we just jumped in with both feet and just said, you know what, we're 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 gonna we're gonna make a forecast and we're gonna go buy the product ahead of time. And we just hoping that our crystal ball that day was not a snow globe and we were <laughs> we were we were we were close. And um and and, and 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 the biggest thing was we just felt like if we were gonna take your money for a product you deserve to get it in a few days. That's all. That's just, that's just one of our philosophies. And and so we ponied up and bought a lot of product and uh, put it in our warehouse. And, you know, we were very anxious when we went live. And, um, <laughs> you know, we were going live October 9th, and we opened it up the, the night of the 8th. And uh, it was uh, it was pretty incredible because you can – I can sit there, a group of us, we were texting back and forth, and you can actually see live where people are on our website around the country, actually around the world, which is really cool. I, I think uh, um, people in 30 to 39 different countries have logged on to our website um, since we went live, which is really cool. And um, awesome. but, but that night, we, we, you could see, you know, you could see people um, jumping on board and checking us out and purchasing which is really awesome to see and and uh um but one one thing is really cool in it's 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 um the guys that have always been using trophy line and a lot of the stories a lot of the people that sherry sold tro uh, trophy line to before are coming back and saying man we're excited you guys are back Very you know <laughs> still using their original and and some of those guys didn't buy a new saddle but they bought some other stuff just to say, hey, we want to buy something from you, which is very, very cool. You know, we are super privileged appreciative when people purchase product from us. You know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> you know, are we going to make some money from Trophy Line? Sure. But that's not that's not why we both this together. We, it really isn't. We're, we're a group of outdoorsmen. We're also a group of businessmen. But we love the outdoors. We love battle hunting. We've all been doing it for 15-plus years or more. Um, all in trophy line. And uh, that doesn't mean to say I have our competitors. I've used them. I think they're great products. But, you know, I always go back to my trophy line, you know, and, and that's how that evolved. And that's how we got here today with um, with the, the, the relaunch of trophy line. And uh, well, I was just going to say, like, one of the things that I didn't I did not anticipate uh, from this conversation something that never really even crossed my mind you know when we talked about the different feels and the different you know how a, how personal a saddle is and things like that you know when you said that um, keeping the dna of the trophy line as it was uh, was very important to you guys uh, and then now you talk about you know the guys that have been using the trophy line for 20 years 15 years or something like that um, it would have been very easy for you to just essentially buy the name and then put out whatever kind of product that you wanted to. Um, but, you know, for someone that's been using a trophy line for that long and for you guys to come back out with it and it has the same feel and it has maybe just a few different tweaks here and there, um, I can see that now as being, you know, important. You know, if you're if you're used to something and then you're like, I'm so happy that they're back and I'm going to order another one, and then you're like, well, what the hell is this? This is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it will it, – it, it definitely feels a little different because it is lighter. Um, it's a, you know, it's, uh, um, it fits a little different or we, we scaled down the size a little bit. Um, some of the original models are a little bigger. I would say maybe a little slot bigger, but this, it's just the way they were built. So we just kind of cut down the size a little bit, um, to kind of cater towards 
how the hunter is now. Mm-hmm. And sure. so there is a definitely a little feel. So you'll get you'll get some of the original guys that are like, eh. but but the biggest thing was you know the uh, those original guys are excited that we're back, and we get emails all the time, emails, DMs, you name it, phone calls. I <clears throat> I swear I probably talked to four or five guys a day. A phone number, you can pick up, call us anytime, ask questions. I got guys that just call and tell me stories, you know, and, uh, and, and, and uh, you can ask, there's a lot of times that you hear a lot of packing tape happening in the background because we're, we're multitasking, we're shipping product and, uh, and talking to consumers at the same time, which is great. And, um, but we also have a lot of new people, a lot of, you know, brand new people, um, that, uh, um, jumped on purchase a purchase a saddle and they'll call us up or dm us or actually i had a couple while we're been sitting here um you know hey i got this for the first time and uh you know what are what are some tips you know so so we've been gathering all this information and we've been communicating and we'll always communicate i love you know you know uh dealing with consumers and customers face to face you know, real FaceTime, as Sherry said. <laughs> and uh, I think that's, I think, I think that's, I think that's very important, especially in this world. Um, but you'll probably see in the future, we're going to take a lot of those, you know, sometimes we take things for granted. We're so close to it. And, um, so I love new eyes, fresh eyes on a category. And you take a lot of that feedback, um, from consumers and some of our influencers that we have that are new to it. And, um, and we'll start putting that out um, in a, on our website and our blogs and, and social media. And so one thing that I wanted to talk about, and, and we kind of glossed over it um, in your, um, you know, I guess involvement with the company, um, was how were you in, introduced to saddle hunting and wh- how was it perceived then <laughs> versus versus now, I guess? What, what's the climate? You're talking, you're talking to me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I got... Actually, I was given um, at a friend of mine that actually repped the product, um, Turkey Line, and okay. given to me. I was actually a buyer at a, at a sporting goods store, and uh, I was given one. And um, but I've always, I've always been a guy that just loves to tinker and loves gizmos and gadgets, and and uh, he'd given me one, <laughs> and uh, and it was literally that. You know, probably I didn't use it all the time. You know, I. You know, over the 15 years, I don't use it exclusively, but I've always used it as a tool. Um, you know, so I always uh, dabbled in it. It was it was definitely refreshing because it was something different. Um, but way I used mine a lot, um, this is going back like 10, 10 plus years, was um, I would always use it to hang my hang-ons. I would I would go up a client, you know, up a climbing stick tether in and then I can I'm hands free and you guys you guys hang hung some hang ons in your time. You know, you tried doing that, right, with <laughs> at the top of it. You got one leg wrapped around the tree, right? Oh yeah. You know, and you you know, you got a line and loop on and and uh if that <laughs> try doing that same try doing that same thing now with uh tree saddle. You can literally move three hundred and sixty degrees around the tree and, and hook that up. So I wasn't just using it as a tree saddle to hunt, and but I was using it to, to utilize hang on. And then what I would normally do is, um, I would benefit, I get to, I, you know, I, I have a lot of friends that have some, some property and, and some private land, so we'll have some tree stands up, things like that. And then, um, but I instead of having a climber in my truck, in case the you know uh, wherever I'm at, the animals are moving, they change patterns, what have you. I had a tree saddle, and and it, so it's really the last ten years I really started to dial that in and um, and, and utilize it quite a bit. And um, and you know it's kind of the beauty of it though, right? Where using a climber, you find an area that you want to hunt. And then you start looking for the perfect tree. 
not necessarily the perfect spot, right? Exactly. And that's the, that's what's great about the tree saddle. Once once people start figuring that out, and you start utilizing what you know, Mother Nature is giving you, you know, regardless of the size of the tree, um, yeah, you you can literally hunt just about anywhere. And uh, and that's really where we started. I started really to dial dial my tree saddle use in um, over the years. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I was through that story. I was expecting you to say, like, I started climbing up these sticks, and then I was hanging the stand, and then I was realizing, like, what the heck am I doing? Like, I could, <laughs> I could already be hunting. Like, I'd already be done. Yeah, I well, don't need this. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, because that's, I mean, that, right. that's that's the way that I feel a hundred percent. Like my, we've been doing a lot of filming, and then I've been filming with, you know, my father-in-law and my buddy, and, uh, you know, my my friend's still hunting out of a. a a lock on and I'll be filming him or he'll be filming me. And even with John, when he was hanging his thing, you know, I climbed up the tree and I'm just sitting there and he's wrestling around with the stand and all this stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, you know, John is, you know, hunted out of the saddle now since then, but you know, my buddy, he's just looking at me like, I need to get what one of those. What? Like I, I, I seriously <laughs> need to get one of those because I'd be done, you know? Right. And, and, and yeah. that's, been the benefit for me um i think honestly i think like with a climber like getting up a tree and you know if there's an area where there's trees and i know where i'm going to hunt um you know a climber's a good option i think i can be a little bit faster up the tree i can be a little quieter i can get it set up a little bit um but with the saddle like once I get up there, I'm just done, and it's like so comfortable. And I like, I think John used the word like free, uh, but it is because you know when you talked, when you know Sherry, when you talked about that that hunt that you were on, and that uh, yeah. tree stand was making the creaking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you move side to side, like in the saddle, you know John was trying to explain it to you know his uncle like it's just dead quiet like there's nothing totally. and it's just totally. fluid oh yeah it's just and it's you know, once you become comfortable right and you find your pivot point yeah it's effortless and you realize you can hunt all the way around the tree mm -hmm. that's when you're like okay this is this is an ultimate tool right? i catch myself kind of swinging now it's like what am i doing <laughs> just kind of swaying <laughs> swaying back and forth you know but it is it's so i mean it's like like I said, it's effortless. You can just by, you know, shifting your, your feet a little bit or just the, you know, the, the tension on your toes even, you can just kind of right. swing out and look and you don't, you're not getting that herky jerky, you know, like when I was, when I said I was st back in my stand with Adam, just the one after one night of in, in the saddle, how many, t like twice within a few <laughs> minutes, I caught myself like losing my balance. Like I was felt like I was falling off the tree stand and it was like man <laughs> you don't get that That's in the sound I think when you once you have um, found yourself where you're not having discomfort in your feet or your knees or moving around uh, you're moving around effortlessly once you get to that point you know you will have uh, arrived I mean you should never feel really any kind of discomfort i've stayed up in a tree all day long from before daylight to after dark i can tell you countless times because i didn't want someone coming in and picking me up at 10 o'clock in the morning you know because i feel like that's like that's like about when things are about to start to happen you know and so i just said leave me in here and get me at the end of the the hunt in the evening um when you can sit up there and be comfortable to that extent you know that you have finally figured out where you where you are in the tree saddle and everybody everybody is different and i would say that um as far as tree saddles as a category go there are going to be the the um, uh, the pro tree saddle hunters that's all you're going to use but we really like to tap into the we are we are a, a tool that every hunter needs we, it, we may not use it every time you go out but you're going to use it every single year that you hunt and it's if you want something that's going to let you get in closer or into sanctuary areas into the bedroom that big buck that you're after 
or if you just want to fill your tags every year as opposed to not getting one uh, in, a, in a season, you know, you're going to find yourself more successful if you just add one tree saddle into your arsenal of tools. Uh, I believe that's where the tree saddle really fits in. And then you have your, your the, like the, the tethered and the, and the um, arrow hunter guys, uh, younger, more agile, all they do is hunt out of a out of a tree saddle, and I believe we fit in there. But uh, I think we have a product that um, that is good for young, old, small, big, you know, all categories. Just get, just add one in your arsenal of tools, and you're going to find yourself more successful in the woods, even out even for out west hunting. Awesome, you know, and. I, th I think that's kind of all we've got, you know, for today. I, I just really wanted to talk about, you know, the company um, and and coming back and the history. I mean, that that's really cool. I mean, I would have never guessed, you know, 1961 in this newfangled saddle hunting. Um, and it just, you know, it just it just seems like it's something that's so fresh and everybody's like just hearing about it about it now. Um, so to get the history from, you know, the, the innovators from the family that created it, um, is, is really awesome. And then, to, you know, to, to bring it back, um, you know, is there anything else that you wanted to hit on Sean, anything? No, I think we covered it all. We just, we just appreciate it. You know, this is, uh, um, you know, you and I have been talking for a while now and, um, and, uh, again, we're just very appreciative that we were, we had the, the ability to do this and. And uh, I think Sherry and I have been talking to each other for a while now, so it's been nice <laughs> to actually talk to somebody else to, about yeah. it and tell, us, and tell our story and get it out there. So um, it's again, very we're exciting. Just, it is. We're we're just excited that Trophy Line is back, and um, and more than just back. You know, we're you know this uh, we this is just scraping the surface um, mm -hmm. with what we have, and um, I'm, we're we're looking forward to the future. Uh, uh, what the trophy line will be bringing. Certainly appreciate so. your time talking with us, and what and wanting to hear our story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's not just us, you know. I mean, there's, you know, we field so many questions about what do you think about this versus this, or what about that, or what about this, or what have you heard from these people and and this, and uh, you know, we're just fortunate enough to be able to have a. a a platform to sit down and have this conversation. I mean, you know, I've talked to a lot of different people who are excited just to hear the story of, you know, what's going on. Cause it's, you know, it, it was a company that everybody knew and it was the only option. And then from that was born these other options and these other things. And then trophy line comes back up and, you know, there's a lot of questions surrounding that. And sure there are. It, we read them. <laughs> but it is it i mean it is is simply that like i said it, it would have been very easy just for somebody to come in with a ball of money by the name and say we're going to put out whatever we want because this is it's there's money to be made here and right. I, I mean john can testify to this too it's like we haven't talked to anybody in the saddle hunting community that didn't just want more people to be in a saddle. I mean, right. that's it, mm -hmm. everybody that we sure. talk to that's a saddle hunter is just like, you know, we just want people to like hunt, to try hunt. a try a saddle hunt and try it. And try it. Just try it. And yep. it's it's funny because it is like, and I I beat on it too because it's 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 a it's comical to me because it's like you read on the forums and stuff like that. It's like. I forget who we were talking to, but I was like, man, if you're not hunting from a saddle, uh, kayaking in, you know, uh, yeah. you know, all, all of these things, you know, doing CrossFit, uh, all these things, vegan, whatever. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, oh, you're one of those saddle hunter guys where saddle's just going to be the greatest thing ever. And, 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 you know, to a, to a degree, I think that might, turn a bunch of people off because they just are sick of hearing all the noise surrounding saddle hunting but you know once you actually try it out and and you do it i don't think that there's anybody that's going to do it and and give it actually a fair shot and is going to say i'll never do that right. they might say yeah, i won't absolutely. do it every time yeah i don't yeah absolutely. like i don't care if you have 
you know, 2,000 acres of hunt or two acres of hunt. And, or you're doing on public ground or private ground or hunting 50 yards from your truck, right? Or your car, right? It's kind of the beauty of the tree saddle. You don't need to have a big truck to carry tree stands around, right? You can throw in your back seat, you know? Uh, it that's kind of the beauty of the tree saddle though you can you can literally go anywhere with it you don't you know it's it's a you know at the end of the day it's a very simple product right there's technology with it but it's very simple it's very packable um and there's one that's made for everybody you know at the end of the day mm-hmm. and very very simple to use i think once people start realizing that it's just a different way to hunt they should try it, you know, uh, try buddies, you know, or, you know, we're going to be out there this year, you know, um, uh, doing more hands-on, some some of the shows, things like that, and come by, try it out. We'll put you on one, we'll put you in the tree, and, and you know what, right at first, it might not feel that comfortable, but I promise you, once you start messing around with it, you'll find your sweet spot, and there'll be one there for you. You guys need to try some knee savers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that make it comfortable. Mm-hmm. And so where can everybody follow along with, you know, what you're doing? You know, you guys actually did something just really awesome here recently with the National uh, Saddle Hunting Day. Um, you know, where? <laughs> what was the story behind that? Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, it's just, it, it, it was a celebration of saddle hunters, right? And we, um... When we started looking at the calendar, um, you know, right, November, it's rut time. And, uh, you know, you start looking at um, when, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at in the country. <clears throat> you know, November 9th is right around that time that if, uh, if, if, if you don't have a big honeydew list, you're in the woods hunting on that day, right? <laughs> that Saturday. It, if you don't have to work and uh so we just felt like let's let's build a promotion around it and and get behind it and kind of celebrate the the, the saddle hunter <clears throat> and um we did that kind of in uh putting that out there a little bit and probably knew we'd get a little bit of hype and we were hoping that others in the, the category you know um tether guys arrow guys and wild edge and i can go on and on um would get behind it also and we did you saw we we we, we tagged our 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 competitors and in, in our uh our posts and tether did the same thing with us and and it just kind of grew from there and uh i think it's great you know it you know the our saddle hunting as a whole it you know when you look at the amount of hunters that are, are using a saddle hunter compared to all the hunters out there kind of a rounding error, right, for <laughs> the, the little mount that's using them still. So we can start celebrating and start getting more attention and people saying, what is that? I'm not quite sure what that is, but I maybe want to find out about it. And that's, that's kind of how that all evolved. And so we look at it, you know what, every every the second Saturday of every November now, we're, we're probably at, it's going to be National Saddle Hunting Day. And, and continue to build on that. And so we hope to see more of that, um, you know, not just uh, the saddle guys, but all the things that go along with that. Um, like I said, Wild Ed jumped on it. I saw uh, on their on, on their social posts they were getting behind it. And, and, again, it's celebrating the saddle hunter. Let's do some promotions around it. Obviously, we did a bunch of giveaways around it and, uh, and go from there. I thought I thought it I thought it would come off for the first year. I thought it come off pretty good. You know, I'd give it out of a ten. I'd give it a six. Always love improvement improvement to it. So, <laughs> so well, I will continue to grow year after year. And so, where can people follow along, and where where can they find uh, the products and everything like that? So on uh, on our website trophyline.com. dot um, uh, Obviously, we uh, we 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 started blocks a couple weeks ago. So we have uh, we have new blog posts coming out every single um, uh, every, about every two weeks. Instagram uh, uh, trophy line underscore um, we're on there, and then uh, uh, Facebook uh, trophy line tree saddles. Um, 
and we do obviously we do post on a regular basis but one kind of thing kind of cool we get we get an opportunity to do is the the rich history of trophy line and uh so you'll see a lot of great posts in there from the past of uh uh sherry and her dad and and then yeah um trophy line and and some of the old pictures that um sherry uh shared with us and her family and and a lot of customers uh over the time so you not only just get uh all the new stuff but you get a lot of rich history um amongst those posts um and it's beautiful now too you know for us only being live for a little over five weeks you know there's there's quite a few hunters out there posting pictures uh uh hanging from the tree for the first time anywhere from unboxing videos <laughs> to hanging in the tree to you know posting pictures with their harvest it's uh it's really cool to see you know um back uh what is it sherry two ata shows we were sitting down together uh, yes. uh and, and working out the plan January, yeah yeah january will be two years you know when, when we sat down and to see where it comes full circle and and seeing the community rally behind it and utilizing mm-hmm. the product is very awesome well awesome guys like i said th- and thank you for your time because like I, I say I, there's a lot of people out there that just wanted to hear the story and uh kind of uh I guess put the ends of the circle together because it, it certainly has come full circle. So, yeah, absolutely. Definitely appreciate it. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much.